<clears throat> okay guys, so I'm going to go through and just really quickly explain these problems. I'm hoping they weren't too bad. There are a couple of tricky ones, but otherwise I'm hoping they're not too bad. Alright, so for true and false, um, gas particles that act ideally lose energy every time they collide. Um, no, the, the whole point is that um, gas particles that act ideally have elastic collisions, meaning that they don't lose energy. So that's false. And I wrote non-ideally, or you can write don't lose energy. There's a large distance, be distance between gas particles as compared to their relative size. That's true. Gases and liquids are compressible, but solids are not. That's not true. Gases are compressible, but solids and liquids are not. And that goes back to our whole conversation about the skydiving issue. Okay. Number four, gases fill the entire container. Um, that's true. The expected order of density, so gases are the least dense, the least compact than liquids and solids. That's true. As we climb a mountain to a higher altitude, we experience a pressure decrease. That is true. If the column of mercury in a barometer drops to a lower reading, this means the measured pressure has decreased. Yeah, because in a barometer you have the atmospheric pressure pushing down on the liquid in the bath, which means that um, which causes, sorry, the liquid in the barometer to go up. So if the liquid drops down, that means that the pressure that's pushing down outside has dropped as well. The conversion factor for pressure, this is false, so it's 760 millimeters of mercury in 1 ATM. Boyle's law states that as the volume of gas increases, um, that's false, pressure decreases. For all gas law calculations, the temperature must be in Kelvin, that's true. The volume of a gas is dependent on the temperature. Okay, that has to do with um, Charles' law, right? There, um, it's not independent. If you increase temperature, the volume of the gas is going to change. Absolute zero refers to zero Kelvin, not zero degrees Celsius. Thirteen, the volume of a gas and the number of particles is directly proportional. Okay, so just think about it. If you increase the number of particles. Okay, the volume is going to increase, which means they're directly proportional. We didn't actually go over Avogadro's law for that, um, but you don't really need it. It's just kind of common sense. 14, a gas may behave ideally under conditions of low pressure. So this, that was false. It's low pressure, right, and high temperature is when it's going to act ideally. It's high pressure and low temperature, okay, that it's not going to act ideally. A barometer uses an... The answer is B, because of the density of mercury, you don't have to have a really tall barometer. Okay. This is my conversion. I, any problem, guys, on your test where it requires math, show your work, because I can at least give you partial credit. For here, it's um, you're in ATM, so ATM on bottom, millimeters of mercury up top, 760 and 1, and so that's my answer. It needs three sig figs, so your answer is A. For here, guys, what you should notice is that you're talking about a volume change and you're talking about a pressure change, which tells you you're going to be using Boyle's Law. I don't specifically ask for that, but just be able to create it without me having to say, oh, the constant and what law are you using, and then you could then go and do it. And so this is the answer that I get. So I'm not going to go through all my work. We've, we're past that point now, I'm hoping. Which of the following is true for gases? The temperature of a gas is inversely proportional to its pressure. That is false. They're directly related, and that's what Gay-Lussac's law tells you. The volume of a gas is directly proportional to the pressure in Tor. That is false based on um, Boyle's law. Pressure and volume are inversely related. And the pressure of a gas is due to collisions of gas molecules. That is true. Okay, so C is the only, 3 is the only one. One liter of gas in a sealed container contains, so it has a movable piston. If the piston, so that's like the, the um, plunger in our, um, sorry, my brain, in our um, syringe. Okay. If the piston is moved so that the volume of the gas is compressed to half a liter, what's the pressure? So I started to write out the, the work. What you, you should realize is if you're halving pressure, Okay, that's going to have the exact opposite effect on volume. So if you're halving pressure, okay, um, oh sorry, if you're halving my brain, if you're halving volume, then that's going to double the pressure. Okay, so your answer is C. Now I start this one 20 because it's actually hard. It makes you think. Crazy concepts. All right, so we're dealing with volume and temperature. Okay. Notice a couple of things. My volumes are not in the same units. So what I did was I made this. Um, both of them into liters. So I kept 1.55 liters and I converted milliliters into liters. Remember, you can if you can't do this in your head, crisscross swoosh, a thousand mils on bottom, one liter up top, so you end up just dividing by a thousand. 
or I could have made it, could have made it a milliliters. It doesn't matter. You'll get the same answer, I promise. So this could have been 155 milliliters, and that's 755 milliliters. I've got to convert to Kelvin, so I add 273 to 32, and I'm solving for T2. Guys, what you need to do, cross multiply. So 1.55 times T2 equals this times that. Then you're going to divide both sides by the 1.55, and you get your answer. Now, it's 149 Kelvin. Do not let me trick you and put A. It's asking for it in Celsius. These are all the options in Celsius. So you've got to go then go and subtract 273. Okay. So um, I didn't actually round when I got this. Um, remember, the, you're going to only round at the very last step. So the last step is subtracting 273. So you do you go based on decimal places. Okay. 21. Um, if the pressure is doubled, what happens to the temperature? Well, they're directly related. So if pressure is doubled, that means temperature has to be doubled. Okay. 22, what is the final volume of a container? Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I'm changing all three variables, P, V, and T. All right, so you just got to plug and chug. This is your P1. This is your V1. Okay, I'm keeping it in mils. That's fine. And this is my T1 which is given to me, then this is my um, P2, I don't know V2, and this is my T2. So what I need to do, cross multiply, so 1 times 500 times 333 equals this times this times this. And then I'm, what I'm going to do is divide both sides by whatever this product is, right, to solve for V2. So I got this answer right here. If you notice, my answer is in milliliters, and they're asking for liters. So again, you move your decimal place over three places because you divide. So one, two, three. Oops, sorry. That's 361.6, I believe. So one, two, three. And so I get 0.362. Okay. 23. Um, it's giving, as soon as you see moles, guys, and I, I'm giving you your R, you're going to be using the ideal gas law. So PIVNR, PV equals NRT. I give you your volume in milliliters. Notice it needs to be in liters. So again, I move my decimal place over three places to make it liters. Okay, Equals, I give you moles, I give you your R, and then I give you temperature, but in Celsius. It needs to be in Kelvin. right? Look at your R value. So I add 273 to 28 and get 301, and I solve and get A for my answer. It needs to be three sig figs. This is three, this is three, this is three, this is three. So three sig figs right there. All right, next one, 24. What is the pressure? Blah, 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 blah. Okay, cool. Now, um, I tell you 18 grams, right? You're going to be using PV equals NRT. I don't give you moles. I give you grams. So you first have to convert. Yeah, it's a pain in the butt. You guys can do it. So I showed my crisscross swish. I put grams here because that's my given. Crisscross swish, grams on bottom, moles up top. This is the molar mass of HE, and so I got 4.50 moles. And then I can just plug it into PV equals NRT, and I've got all my other values. Remember, I've got to be in moles, I've got to be in Kelvin here, and I've got to be in liters based on my R value. 25, again, equals is PV equals NRT. Notice I still give you this R value, but I give you this in millimeters of mercury. And so what you need to do is first convert from millimeters of mercury to atmospheres. I'm only going to give you this R value. Okay, so I converted and I got 2.051. Remember, you're not rounding. Don't do it based on fewest number six fix. So I just wrote them out. You just keep it in your calculator, to be honest. Okay, times the 30 liters equals, okay, and I solve for T. Okay. Um, oh, and by the way, it's asking for it in Celsius, but this gives it to you in Kelvin. So then you have to subtract 273 from that. Okay, which conditions can cause a non-ideal gas behavior by decreasing the space between the gases, so that's high pressure, and slowing gas particles, that's low temperature. So the answer is B. Okay. Um, this is a Dalton's partial pressure. Okay. It tells you what the total pressure is, 771. It tells you what the pressure of nitrogen is, and it tells you what the pressure of radon is. So it's asking you um, for the pressure of helium. So you just subtract and you end up getting 103. So 771 minus that, minus that, you get 103. Again, partial pressure. This is your total pressure. This is the partial pressure of oxygen. So you just subtract and you get C. What is the set of condition? This is just something you have to memorize, guys. It's 273 Kelvin and 760 millimeters mercury. Because remember when I said STP, I told you 0 degrees Celsius, which is 273 Kelvin, and 1 atmosphere, which is 760 millimeters mercury. Okay. Um, 
For here, these are slightly harder problems. You gotta use your brain. So it tells you you have 15.0 liters of nitrogen. Now, since you're at STP, what you can assume is that 22.4 liters of that gas equals one mole. So I start with liters, okay, and I get into moles of it by using the 22.4. I'm now in moles, but I wanna get into liters of hydrogen. So I've got to use my mole to mole ratio. So I'm going to put moles of N2 on bottom, moles of H2 up top. And I put my um, the coefficients for these. This is my mole to mole ratio. Now I'm in moles of H2. I want to get into liters of H2. So I crisscross which again, moles on bottom, liters up top. It doesn't matter the identity of the compound. As long as you're at STP, all gases have a volume of 22.4. Okay, and then I get my answer. Notice the 22.4s do cancel. That's awesome. Sometimes they won't if I ask for, for example, grams. Okay. How many liters are needed? So it gives you 56.0 liters of that. So again, you go to moles of CH4. I'm trying to get into O2, so I'm going to use my mole to mole ratio. Moles of CH4 on bottom, moles of O2 up top. Then I get into liters of O2. Okay. Um, again, the exact same thing, except there's one complicating factor. What I give you in this problem is 2.45 kilograms of CO. Okay, so first of all, I want to get into grams because we never work with kilograms. So one kilogram on bottom, a thousand grams up top, and then I want to get into moles of CO. So the difference here, I'm not giving you liters of CO. I'm giving you the grams, which is totally fine. Okay, still put grams of CO on bottom, moles of CO up top. You're going to be using your molar mass. So the molar mass of CO is 28. And I'm going to put one here. Now I'm in moles of CO. And I'm going to put moles of CO on bottom, moles of CO2, which I'm trying to get into up top. I use my mole to mole ratio, which is just one to one. And now I want to get into liters. So again, crisscross swish, moles of CO2 on bottom. And it's 22.4 liters of CO2. And so I get my answer. All right, and sig figs. Three sig figs, three sig figs. We're good to go. Sodium reacts with a chlorine gas, according to this. What volume of Cl2 gas measured at? So you've got all of this information here is required to form 28 grams of NaCl. So this is the hardest problem in this bunch. What you first want to figure out is how many moles of Cl2 are needed to make this. Okay, so this is a flashback to stoichiometry. We can totally do it. So I start with 28 grams of NaCl. Okay, I want to get into moles of Cl2. Because if I have moles, guys, then I can find the volume using my ideal gas law, my PV equals nRT. So I crisscross swoosh, put grams of NaCl on bottom, moles of NaCl up top. This is the molar mass of NaCl. Crisscross swoosh again, moles of NaCl on bottom, moles of Cl2 up top. This is my mole, um, mole to mole ratio. And this is what I get for moles of Cl2. Now what I can do is plug in my moles of Cl2, plug it into PV equals nRT, and solve for V. So I know my pressure. I, know my, I don't know my volume, which I'm trying to solve for. I know my moles, I know that, and I know that. So I was able to solve for my volume based on the number of moles of Cl2, which I got from the grams of NaCl. For the challenge problem, guys, anyone who wants to be an AP needs to try this and actually work through it and check your answer with me. Well, those are my answers, 60.7%, and those are my answers. But um, ask me any questions if you have them. That's it.